This week, we have a few possible ways for students to get an internship. And there is a bunch of stuff to be looking forward to around campus. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to our last show of the semester. I'm Clara Thompson. And I'm the one and only Jake Ushery. Let's jump right into it. As the semester comes to a close, students are all preparing for next semester. For many, that means they're looking into internships to help the, give them experience in their field. Thankfully, OBU has several handy resources to help students find them. The first is the career portal on OBU's website. There you'll find all sorts of internships and other possible job opportunities. Another resource on campus is your very own professors. They're sure to have connections in different places they've worked and, uh, well, different places they worked in the past, and uh, so send them an email to ask about where they might be able to send you. OBU also hosts career fairs throughout the semester, so make sure to check your emails for dates of these events. When looking for internships without the help of OBU, networking websites such as LinkedIn can provide direct contact with recru recruiters from different companies. Along with that, many companies have links right on their website for potential interns. So, if you have a specific company in mind, you can check there. If you have any specific questions, you can call the OBU Career Development Desk here at OBU. Thank you. Happy job hunting. On Monday, November 18th, a man opened fire on two people sitting in a car outside a Walmart in Duncan, Oklahoma. Police said the gunman, after killing the victims, took his own life. Authorities are continuing their search for the witnesses, as well as security footage from the hours leading up to the event. Duncan Police Chief Danny Four said in an interview, quote, the motive is, remains unclear. I have no idea what was going through his head, end quote. The shooting took place just days after the reopening of a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, where the mass shooting leaving 22 people dead happened earlier this year. In light of some baby delivery issues with midwives, more regulations may make their way to Oklahoma. There have been two failed attempts to regulate Oklahoma's non-nurse midwives in recent years. After suspicious happenings, Oklahoma Senator Stanley and others are going to take a stand on making new regulations. If you are planning on using a midwife in the future, make sure to do lots of background checks. The Blue Zones Project is a community-wide improvement initiative to help make healthy choices easier for everyone in our community. Overall, the small changes contribute to huge benefits for all of us, resulting in a higher quality of life. Student athletes from OBU take the time out, out of their day to walk from Will Rogers Elementary to school on Tuesday mornings. This initiative was made to help decrease childhood obesity in Shawnee. Our own Vicki Coolidge talked to OBU Police Chief David Shannon about safety on our campus. There are four blue phones on campus to improve safety on campus. Check it out. Safety on college campuses is very important, especially today. Today I am with Officer Brett Askin and he's going to be talking about how these blue phones work. Can you tell us a little bit about this blue phone? Yes, it's a very simple uh, mechanism. All you have to do is if you have an emergency, come up and press the red, the red button and you'll be connected to our OBU Police Department switchboard instantly. Now, what are the purposes of these blue phones? For student safety. And where are they located around campus? We have four on campus. There's one right here by Montgomery Hall, right on the corner of University and by the Geiger Center drive-in. There's one in the Oval by Shawnee Hall and the Gazebo. There's one in the Art Annex uh, parking lot right by the South uh, by the west door and one in the soccer lot uh, between the gravel lot and the soccer lot. Okay and a lot of college campuses have been getting rid of their blue phones. Why are we just now installing these? Well we were very lucky that these phones the money for them was donated by the Women of Vision here on campus and installed by our facility services. Um, 
we just don't feel that there can ever be too much safety on campus, whether it's a, a technology that's been around for a long time or a newer technology. So we'll do anything we can to, to make our campus safer, whether it be additional lighting, which I don't know if you've ever noticed in this last year, this area in particular had gotten some additional lighting also by the same Women of Vision program. And am I allowed to hit the button to show what it's going to do? Yes, it's not, it's not normally recommended, but I have uh, alerted our dispatchers that, that we will be testing the system and so that they will know that it's not an actual emergency. Uh, under no circumstances should the button be pressed in a non-emergency, just plain type thing. Absolutely. Dialing the PG number. Okay, so it's dialing to the... Uh, University Police. University Police? This is a test. This is only a test. If this had not been a test, we wouldn't be doing it. All right. All right. Blue lights flashing. And, of course, the video is on. So. All right. There you have it. The blue phones are on campus. You know, Jake, I know I've had many lonely walks from the parking lot to Taylor, and it makes me feel better knowing that there are blue phones out there. I am too, Clara. I feel it's important for students at OBU to feel safe. Man, I'm glad that we have that on campus. Motorola has just revealed the Motorola Razr, giving the world a new take on the classic flip phone. The company's original Razr was the, quote, phone to own, end quote, in the mid-2000s before smartphones like the BlackBerry and the Apple iPhone changed the field. The Razer is back, only it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's only an Android smartphone that can fold in half with a design heavily inspired by the 2004 model. A spokesperson for the company said, quote, it's a phone that looks and feels like the future of smartphones. We'll have to spend more time with it to see if the idea can stick the landing on the first attempt. If nothing else, it's a bold design that pushes the idea of what a smartphone might look like moving forward, end quote. Deer hunting season is here. To all the hunters roaming OBU, we know that this is an exciting time for you. It starts November 23rd and will last through December 8th. The season limit is six, and no more than two of the six may be antlered. Deers that are taken from January 1st through the 15th will also be included in the 2019 season limit. Have fun this season and get to hunting if that's your thing. Yesterday marked the 15th day of President Trump's impeachment hearing. And one of the standout moments was when Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman testified against President Trump in regards to the phone call the president had with the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky. The lieutenant colonel said that when he heard the phone call for himself, he felt that it was his duty to report any, quote, concerns to the proper people in the chain of command, end quote. Vindman later stated that President Zelensky should stay out of American politics and, quote, there were public actors and non-governmental actors that were prompting the idea of investigations into 2016 Ukrainian interfer <coughs> interference, end quote. On the 7th of November earlier this year, 14-year-old Alec Ingram died after a four-year battle with cancer. This past Sunday in his Missouri hometown, a procession of 4,500 sports cars led the way to the cemetery where he was buried. It was Alec's final wish, and the one made possible thanks to the organization Sydney's Soldiers Always. As the convoy of supercars and sports cars traveled through Washington, Missouri, people lined the streets with signs of support. Many of the drivers came from all over the country to participate. Our very own reporter, Lauren Rhodes, visited Piedras Negras, Mexico this month and came across a place known as Casa Bethesda. Keep watching to learn more. Casa Bethesda is a home for physically and mentally disabled adults located in Piedras Negras, Mexico, and is the only one that exists in the state of Coahuila. It first opened 25 years ago, and although it's not publicized to the community, the founder says they have never gone without. The home currently has 26 residents, most of whom are orphaned, and nine of which are completely unable to take care of themselves. And there are only about four to five employees who run this home regularly. But despite these things, the residents are still happy and loving. They get excited for visitors and love on them as if they are their own family due to not having their own. They get excited to play games and do crafts or anything else that involves them interacting with other people. The residents who are physically able have the ability to leave the home at any time. 
but stay for the care they receive from their caretakers, as well as the family they have amongst each other. This is Lauren Rhodes, OBU TV. After the break, Vicki has your entertainment. Why do you even try so hard? No one likes you. No one wants to hang out with you. Why would he post that? That's so He's stupid. so annoying. Why are you even here? You're so weird. You're so dumb. You're dark. Dark. He and decided ugly. to post and on no Instagram again. You. How dumb. He's so annoying. Everyone at wow, school thinks you're taking super hate. weird. Why no do you even try so hard? No one Why would he post that? No one That's so stupid. Just You're fat and, and no ugly likes and no He's one so likes you. Weird. No one wants just to remind you that no one likes you. Why does he post like that? You're so annoying. Why did he decide to post that? Why did he do that? He's so annoying. Why would he post that? That's so stupid. Why do you even try so hard? No one likes you. that. Have you noticed the weather becoming more unpredictable? Have you seen those photos of the ice caps melting? Well, it's not some sick joke that some meme page on Instagram thought up. That's actually real. That's happening. Because when you do this, we can't have this. Hey guys, it's Vicky here with your Christmas entertainment. Buckle up your seatbelts because you're about to get a Christmas overload. To kick off Christmas events, Kerr Christmas is happening Monday, December 2nd in Kerr's Lobby. There will be musical talent and funny skits. On December 3rd, Festival of Fools is having a Christmas improv show to get you in the holiday spirit. That same night, WMU is hosting Deck the Halls. Every hall in WMU will be decked with Christmas decor. Christmas Chapel follows the next day on December 4th at 10 a.m. The festive chapel service will include musical talent, MCs, and funny videos. Continuing in the Christmas spirit, we have Hanging of the Green that Saturday, December 7th from 7.30 to 9 in Rayleigh Chapel. Wow, talk about a lot of Christmas activities. But can you really have too many Christmas events? I think not. Today, we have a live interview with one of the directors of Kerr Christmas, Noah. Thanks so much for being here today. Oh my goodness, thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Well, I'd like to start off by asking, what exactly is Kerr Christmas? Okay, so Kerr Christmas, uh, like the campus activity board, puts on a bunch of those cab shows. Uh, so we have Biggie and we have Freshman Follies. In the spring, we'll have Spring Affair. Uh, but we also do two small shows a year, as well as a cab banquet at the end of Dead Week. Uh, but Kerr Christmas falls into one of those small shows. It is just literally a miniature cab show within the lobby of Kerr. We're going to have acts, MCs, except we'll also have some hosts. And they're going to be able to do some games with the crowd. And so it's honestly a really fun time. So Gracelyn Basinger and I had the opportunity to be able to direct this show this year. Awesome. Can you give us any like hints on like the skits that okay. are going to be happening? Okay, so the purpose of Kirk Christmas, it's going to be during Dead Week. And so we know everyone, including myself, definitely including myself, is going to be stressed with papers and homework. So this is going to be an opportunity for them to come away and just have a chance to breathe for like literally an hour. So the skits that we have, we have some great MCs, uh, one of which is Claire Thompson, who's like the host here, uh, and she's going to do a great job. Nice. We have some great MCs who are going to do some skits regarding maybe the change in OBU's leadership as president. He might be involved and maybe some other skits that involve possibly the... Uh, I would say maybe Greek life on campus. So get, get excited, it'll be a good show. Okay, wow, okay, so I know that the show is split into MCs and talent. So mm -hmm. what talent are you really uh, looking forward to seeing perform? Well, who doesn't like Christmas music? Uh, I'm really excited for the Christmas acts that we have. We're gonna have a handful of students from freshman class all the way to senior class uh, with their friends doing different type of musical acts some of which we have never performed. Uh, in a cab show before. Wow. So this is really exciting, especially for the fact that it's going to be in such like a gentle and sweet environment. 
and it's Christmas time, so who can't get excited for that? Exactly, that's awesome. Yeah. And my last question, why do you think people should come to Kirk Christmas? I don't think there's a reason why you shouldn't be at Kirk Christmas. Kirk Christmas is gonna be on Monday night at 8 p.m. in the Kerr lobby, and it's gonna be a way for you to take a break from getting from the stress of your homework and the civ papers that you haven't written yet. And so be able to take a break and come laugh because we're gonna have Christmas cookies and hot chocolate and everyone's gonna be there, so join us then. Sounds like a good time. Thank you so much for oh being on the show. After the break, there's more entertainment. During finals week, breakfast food is breaking fast into the calf. On December 9th at 9 p.m., there will be an event called Late Night Breakfast. It's a time where students can take a break from studying and enjoy a night of free breakfast food. Do you ever have one of those nights where you just want to sit down with a cup of hot chocolate? If you said yes, then the Beta Hot Chocolate Party is the party for you. The event will be in the Lodge December 3rd and will last from 9 to 11 p.m. You can come hang out, chill, and drink hot chocolate with your friends. For all you crazy Harry Styles fans, it's time to start screaming because Harry Styles is releasing his new album, Fine Line, December 13th. Two of his songs are already available on iTunes and the rest of the album can be pre-ordered. This has been your Christmas entertainment. It has been such an honor to be your entertainment anchor this semester. Thanks so much for tuning in. When we come back, Brendan will have your sports update. Why do you even try so hard? No one likes you. No one wants to hang out with you. Why would he post that? That's so He's stupid. so annoying. Why are you even here? You're so weird. You're so You're dumb. Fat he and decided ugly to post on no Instagram again. How dumb. He's so annoying. Everyone at wow, school guess thinks you're taking super hint. weird. Why no do you even try so hard? No one Why would he post that? No one That's so stupid. Just You're fat that and no ugly you. and no He's one so likes weird. you. Hey, no one wants just to remind you that no one likes you. I can't. Why does he look like that? You're so annoying. He's so annoying. Why do you even try so hard? No one likes you. That's so weird. Why do you even try so hard? No one likes you. That's so weird. Why do you even try so hard? No one likes you. That. The OBU stunt team has been dominant in their first few scrimmages. They have recently beat the University of Central Oklahoma 21 to 2 before beating OSU. 18 to 5. The Bison ended up third last year at the Nationals. They will start this year's season on January 28th. OBU takes State of Oklahoma yet again. Our 2019 season ended with a historic 7 to 4 record and a fifth place finish in the GAC. This past week, OBU's football running back Tyler Stever was named Player of the Week for the second time this season. Overall, OBU's football Overall, OBU football thanks you for your support throughout the year. Intramurals are coming to an end for this fall season. Flag football games and football and volleyball games that finished last week and a few coming up to finish this upcoming week. Since the playoffs have started, the games have only become more and more exciting. If you haven't made it to a game yet, go and watch the few that are left. Going along with intramurals and it being Thanksgiving and Christmas time, I could not help but think how thankful I am for some of the names the teams have. In volleyball, we have teams such as Donald Bump, Hits Don't Lie, and Freeballin'. Our flag football teams have some clever ones also, with team names like No Punt Intended, Girl Scout Dropouts, Title IX Troopers, and my favorite, D's Punts. Now back to Jake and Clara. Well, Jake, I think it's that time. We've had a great show this season. It's been an honor being an anchor on such an incredible show with such outstanding people. Mm -hmm. 
Clara, I completely agree. This semester has been a bit of a hectic one, but it's also been so full of amazing moments. I mean, where else could I dress up as Ace Ventura on a live broadcast? It's been a wild ride. Honestly, it's been a pleasure just watching the show grow from the beginning of the year. Whether it has been the news packages created by our photographers or the stories written by our news writers, we have all come such a long way and I'm so proud. I am, well, I'm really proud too. I'm super excited because I finally get to go home. <laughs> the producers are making me sleep in a cage here in between each show and it's become to be a little subpar. On that note, we want everyone to have a Merry Christmas and we are so excited for next year's show. Absolutely. Uh, we absolutely love doing this for you guys uh, each week. Have a great Christmas break, everyone. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us on OBU TV News. And get ready for next year's show, which will resume this coming February. This, OBU, this is OBU TV News signing off for the last episode of 2019. Hostess with the mostest out. <laughs>